program you are about to enjoy is intense. CPU intense. Please ensure all other web browsers, Windows, and media-heavy programs are closed before participating. You may experience audio or video loss if running other programs. Thanks. AEOP membership is pleased to present Person to Person Tonight, The Importance of Leadership A Special Alumni and Mentor Discussion Featuring AEOP Membership Council Members Melissa Jones and Samina Mandal With Special Guests Karen Felton from the Department of Defense And Medical Corps and Army Veteran Joel Eds Welcome to AEOP's Person to Person. I'm Samina Mondal, your host for this incredible event. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. The goal of our Person to Person series is to provide you with the information, skills, and insights needed to pursue your interests and careers in STEM. Tonight, we will be exploring the importance of leadership and experience and how it plays in the application process in all stages of life, including high school, college, and in the workplace. In order to dive into the applications of leadership, we will be meeting two extraordinary individuals who have spearheaded amazing careers in STEM. Tonight, we are pleased to be joined by Ms. Karen Felton and Mr. Joel Eads. To begin, let's meet our panelists. Ms. Karen Felton has over 20 years of engineering experience and technical leadership in the Department of Defense and private industry, including mic microlithography, parental manufacturing, and space. Karen uses her diverse skill set to lead, inspire, mentor others, and improve processes without sacrificing quality. She has had many noted successes in the defense arena as a senior product quality assurance engineer, systems engineer, product engineer, and as the engineer competency manager, where she led over 450 engineering and IT professionals in the Marine Corps acquisition supporting workforce development. Karen is also a STEM champion, public speaker, and change agent who values people and leads with compassion. She is a pas she's passionate about educating youth and enjoys giving back to her community. Ms. Felton also currently serves as a SMART Scholarship for Service Program Manager. For those of you who don't know, the SMART program, or the Science, Mathematics, and Research for Transformation SMART Scholarship, is a Department of Defense program that supports students with both educational and workforce development for bachelor's, master's, and PhD students. Welcome, Ms. Felton. And now on to our second panelist, Mr. Joel Eads. Mr. Eads is a 2004 graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point. He received a BS in, in Defense and Strategic Studies with a Mechanical Engineering track. Over the course of his 12-year Army career, he had the unique distinction of serving in three branches of the United States Army, Infantry, Aviation, and Medical Service Corps. Through the course of his Army career, he led soldiers across both Afghanistan and Central America. He currently serves as a Chief Operations Officer for Leonard Agricultural and is receiving his Master of Divinity in Biblical Counseling from the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. Welcome, Mr. Eads. Thanks for that introduction, Samina. It's great to be here tonight. Thank you. So we are so lucky to have you both here tonight to discuss your leadership experience within your careers. 
So to kick off our conversation, Ms. Felton, would you like to start by discussing how you see the importance of leadership and experience in your field of work? Well, thank you for that. Uh, leadership is very important in, in my field of work, which is engineering, science, technology, engineering, and math, but also workforce development. I'll first start off by saying everyone is a leader. It is how you operate and how you move and how you uh, show up that defines what type of leader you are. Uh, science, technology, engineering, math, hard topics um, that require discipline, that require uh, a lot of work, but it also requires uh, humility. Uh, it requires uh, vulnerability, especially when those, when those answers don't come as quickly as we want them to and you have to ask questions. So leadership in that particular field, in this field, in this day and time for the Department of Defense requires the ability to be innovative and to be creative in your thought process. And a lot of that starts with understanding yourself and understanding what you bring to any space, whether it's STEM, whether it's Army, whether wherever you are, uh, those skills and, and opportunities to develop those skills are vital to not only your, your professional success, but your personal success and how you see yourself and how you carry yourself through your career and your endeavors. That's incredible. Now, Mr. Eads, similar question. We'd like to know how could you give some insights to students about becoming a leader? Sure, well, I, I'll echo what Ms. Uh, Fulton said. I mean, er everyone is a leader, um, you know, but you know, our, our skill sets are different, our personalities are different. Um, I will say the one thing I think that applies to, to everyone as they um, advance in their careers um, in, in terms of leadership, and that is, you know, often success is, is located down a road that nobody wants to go down. <laughs> I mean, and that's a fact. And I think Mrs. Felton, you know, we, we both have worked within the Department of Defense. She'll agree with me on that. Um, success many times, whether it's the Department of Defense, whether it's corporate America um, school, success is normally located at the end of the road that most people resist, um, do, do not want to go down. Um, so, you know, leadership really is, you know, it starts with, like Ms. Felton said yourself, can you lead yourself down that road? Uh, can you lead yourself down a road that, you know, is going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. Um, you know, she pointed out the answers aren't always apparent. Um, it takes time, it takes effort, but that's what it takes to achieve success. And then, you know, once you can do that for yourself, now do you have the ability to lead others down that road? Um, and I know whether it's the Department of Defense, corporate America, you know, when organizations assess talent, when they're looking for young leaders, what they're really looking for is that individual one that can show that they've done that for themselves. Um, and they're looking for individuals that they feel like can take the organization down a road it doesn't necessarily want to go down in order to achieve success. Because the challenges today are great, um, probably greater than what you know most of us have ever seen. Um, organizations don't naturally want to evolve and change. And so you know, one of the important aspects of leadership um, right now uh, in the time that we're living in is do you have the ability to take yourself, to take others, to take organizations down a road that it's going to resist in order to achieve success? Wonderful. So those are some incredible thoughts. And I think we'd like to know how you both lead people in your lives. So whether that be through the work that you do or maybe the positions that you play in your community, we'd love to learn a little bit more about that. Um, when it, when it comes to, to leading people that, that really is the essence of leadership, every organization, it, it doesn't matter if it's, it doesn't matter if it's the military, it doesn't matter if it's corporate America, sports team, church, it's, it is a, it is a microcosm of people. It is people. Um, and the biggest thing you have to remember is you, you truly have to care about people. Um, you know, Henry David Thoreau, I think once said, I'll butcher the quote, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Henry David Thoreau that said, you know, the true cost of anything is, is how much life you give up, you know, to achieve it. And uh, sometimes we don't think about that in terms of leadership. You know, we're so focused on getting the team across the finish line or accomplishing the mission or, you know, helping the organization achieve success. Sometimes we don't think about how much life people, you know, the individuals that make up that organization, what they're truly giving up um, in order to help us achieve that success. And typically, you know, people can tell right away 
you know, whether, you know, we're thinking about them, uh, you know, and just what they're sacrificing in, in order to help us achieve success or whether we're simply just focused on the end state. Um, and so I, I think, you know, in terms of like leading people, I think the biggest thing we can do is really just care. Um, and, 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 and always be validating that and, and showing them that we care, showing them that we understand what they're going through in order to help us achieve success. Um, and a lot of times we're so afraid to do that because we just assume the automatic response is people are going to be angry or they don't want to. You'll be amazed at what people will step up and, and the success that the group can achieve if you simply acknowledge, hey, I understand this is difficult. I understand that everyone's having to sacrifice a lot to accomplish this goal. Um, but sometimes just simply acknowledging that is enough to really bring a, a group of people together um, and push forward. So I think in terms of leading people is just remembering that we're leading people. We're not leading teams. We're not leading organizations. We're not leading battalions, brigades, we're <laughs> leading people. And as long as we keep the focus on, on people, you'll be amazed at, you know, what people will come together to accomplish. Very true. Thank you both for your responses. So in a similar light, we want both of you to kind of consider why should students within different communities take on leadership roles? We know that some people may feel as though it could be for self-benefit or a community's benefit. What have you both seen that student leaders in your community have done, or even from your past experiences uh, have created in the communities and how has it had a lasting effect? Okay, I believe the question is, how have I seen um, people in the community have a lasting effect in their leadership? Um, I would say that what I've seen is people lead out of a place of integrity. I've seen people show up I've seen people commit and be intentional about their actions. And that has, has so resonated with me on so, so many different levels. Um, when I was in high school, I uh, did community service. I worked alongside, you know, people, you know, either feeding the homeless or, or working uh, to, to kind of, you know, pick up trash on the side of the road, being part of that team, being part of um, clubs in school that that actually went to schools and, and read to kids. So I I was around when I wasn't in the classroom. I actually participated in activities that that didn't just serve me, that served others, and I was led in those activities by men and women who again served others. So I believe it's important for everyone to have that opportunity to be in an atmosphere where you can actually contribute and you can benefit from from a leader actually stepping out there and and, and meeting a need or or providing some sort of service or, or doing some sort of work that extends um from yourself and what that will do it'll, it'll do a couple of things one it'll humble you uh, one of the things that I love about working with people, uh, is, is my colleague said here, is that you learn so much. You learn from other people just by being in the room with somebody that is different from you. So first and foremost, absolutely put yourself in an environment where one, you can learn from other people and you can be a little uncomfortable while you're learning because it'll stretch you. It'll cause you to see different points of view. It'll cause you to to have uh, critical thinking, not just about yourself, but what you're doing. And those are just uh, a few opportunities and examples. But for me, it has been extremely beneficial to actually uh, model some of the behavior that I saw. And that's what it'll do when you are around someone who is intentional and purposeful um, and, and you'll see the process evolve and hopefully you'll, you'll key in on some attributes. Uh, and I just wanna add one more thing um, I don't want to disparage anyone. If you see someone in leadership not having those qualifications or not actually living up to a certain standard, we are all a work in progress and, and even leaders get it wrong. And so you can learn from the failures and the missteps of your leaders. It's all a learning process. And all that you're going to do is to collect information and you're going to start to have a, a mind that discerns and that's going to uh, match up with, with your values and what you want to do with your life, what you want, where you want to spend your time and your course correct along the way. All of it is going to add value 
to, to, to what you want to do and, and the impact that you want to have, not just in your community, but in the world. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more than this, Felton. Uh, you know, a leader is not something you are. Leadership is something you do. I mean, that's just that's just the way it is. And and even if you consider yourself a leader, there's going to be times throughout your career where you're in a direct leadership role. You know, there's going to be other times where, you know, other people are, you know, are the, are the leader, you know, and you're going to and you're going to sit back and you're going to learn um, and, and you're going to improve. But yeah, leadership is just something you do. I think where I see most young people make their biggest mistake and, and I assess a you know, talent across our organization, both internal and external, um, quite frequently, is this idea that a leader is something you are. Um, and, and typically where, you know, I, I think we're, we're talking to students today, a lot of them getting ready to get out into the workforce. They're going to go through the interview process. You know, I, I, the mistake I see all the time is this idea that I've graduated from college. I have this piece of paper. I'm a leader. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, if you, can, if you can simply understand that leadership is something you do, and when you get into that interview, um, you know, instead of taking the approach of trying to prove to someone that you're a leader, again, like use examples um, where, hey, you know, it, you know, this time I was a leader because this was the challenge and I was able to lead myself and others through that. Um, you know, and, and then I, I love it when someone says, hey, you know, during this particular instance, you know, I wasn't the leader, but I observed this and it's the kind of leader and it's the kind of leadership that I, you know, aspire to. Um, to practice and, and to demonstrate. And I'd, I'd love for that, you know, to positively affect your organization. So, I mean, just that right there, it's, it's so important understanding that, like Ms. Dalton said, there are days, uh, even as a leader, you show up and you really drop the ball. <laughs> and you have, to, you have to go back that evening and really reassess it and say, okay, I'm the leader, but I did not demonstrate leadership today. Um, and I need to course correct. So I, I couldn't agree more with that. And I think that's a huge mistake that most um young people make and, and to no fault of your own. I think we kind of teach it that way. Um, as, as far as, as far as, um, you know, why you should aspire for leadership again, leadership is born out of challenges. Um, and not only will you learn about your leadership style and, and how to lead people, but ultimately you learn about who you are. Um, and I will say that if you're not seeking out leadership roles and you're not aspiring, um, to be a leader, um, you will really fall short in terms of like just developing yourself and, and figuring out who you are and what your passions are. Um, and I think that's the, the biggest travesty of, of not seeking out leadership. And leadership is not something that you need to be voted into. You don't have to be a part of the team to be a leader. You don't have to be voted a leader. Simply look for a need that needs to be met. And I think Ms. Felton was describing that perfectly, whether it's, you know, people that are going hungry whether it's young students that need someone to take some time and read to them or just speak into their lives. If you want to be a leader, um, I'll tell you, all you have to do is wake up tomorrow and, and see a need and find a challenge that no one else has been willing to meet and just do it, you know, lead yourself there and then watch other people, you know, see your example and then lead them. And all of a sudden leadership, I mean, there you have it. I mean, you've demonstrated leadership and you will be amazed at what you learn about yourself. Wonderful. I think that you both touched on very important aspects of not only becoming a leader, but finding that leader inside of everybody. And I wanted to know, were there any specific skills that you think leaders possess or should possess? Is my audio on? Can you hear oh, me? Oh, yes. Okay. There are. Um, humility is, is, one of my, is one of my favorite uh, words that um, I believe every leader should have. Um, it allows for forward thinking, um, compassion, just a mindset that that's, that comes to the table that says, I don't have all the answers and, and I'm willing to, to work with you. I'm willing to, to, to dig in the trenches with you uh, because I'm, I'm not coming from a place of immediate authority. I'm, I'm coming from a place where we're, 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 we're here working together. So that is definitely one, one attribute Another is discipline. I, I know, I know that's a word that you all may not want to hear, but it is so very true that that leaders, good leaders, didn't start as good leaders. There, there was a discipline. There was a an intentionality 
about about how he or she went about their work and went about their business. So if you're if you're watching this right now and you're thinking, okay, well, how can I be disciplined? You know, we're in the middle of a, a pandemic and I'm in school. Um, start with the basics. Start with um, understanding sort of what it is that needs to be done and just meet meet it. Start by being accountable to yourself and to the people around you. If you if you're gonna turn in something, turn it in on time. If you if you're going to be somewhere, be prompt. If you're going to deliver something, be be deli- be deliberate and then exceed, go above and beyond. You know, those those are just a few attributes that I think leaders have is that they're disciplined because what that does is it shows that you care enough to 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 be present and and to be accountable and that you're always you're always um, moving towards that internal that internal uh, metric or standard that that drives you and then and then you you just you just keep going and trust me that that behavior those attributes are definitely uh, infectious we've already talked about service um, we've talked about um, I think some some others in terms of um, just just coming to the table being ready ready to work. Um, but those those are a, a few that, that resonate with me in terms of uh, characteristics. Yeah, I would, I would say humility, hands down, hands down. I will also say it's the most lacking. Um, it, it, it's the most lacking. And, and I say that in terms of what's what you'll what you'll see and what is truly sad is that everyone knows that's the right answer. That's the problem. Everyone gives that answer. Everyone knows that leaders should lead out of humility. Everyone knows to give that answer. Unfortunately, you know, it it's becoming more and more rare that you'll actually see someone lead out of humility. Um, you, you really have to watch your leaders. And again, when you're learning. Um, don't just listen to the words because at this point you can go to Barnes and Noble and I think there's an entire floor of leadership books. <laughs> Everybody knows how to talk leadership. Um, but I'll tell you, when you really start watching leaders and how they lead um, and, and, and then she hit on discipline, that's one of the first things you look at, um, especially when you're young, everyone thinks of their future and, and they want to either achieve a future or change a future. And I don't remember who said it, but somebody once said, you can't change your future but you can change your habits and, and, and your habits will change the future. Your, your, your habits will affect the future. And leadership is the same way. So many times we look at a challenge, we want to go right to the end result. Um, and, and typically, you know, we're not, we're not disciplined enough. These organizations that you're going to flow into and that you're going to lead they're the, the reason they're not already there is they're not disciplined enough to achieve that. So you have to start, like Ms. Felton said, back at square one, you have to say, okay, let's change our habits. Let's discipline ourselves. And then ultimately that's what, that's what moves you down that road. So I would say, yes, humility, uh, discipline. The third thing I would say that's lacking um, is, is empathy. Um, we, we have really lost the, the art uh, as human beings, uh, unfortunately, of empathizing with each other. Uh, that, that's an important quality that a leader has because, um, yes, there are times, and especially throughout a military career, there were times that, you know, it, it did not matter what we were all feeling. The mission had to be accomplished. Like, so, but you could still empathize. You could still empathize with folks. You could still show folks that you cared, um, that you heard what they were saying and that you understood what they were going through and that you truly empathized and, you know, you were going to do everything you could to take care of them in the process of the organization moving forward. So, yeah, the ability to just lead out of humility, to demonstrate discipline, both in your personal life and to help instill that into the organization. And then again, always, you know, making sure that people understand you have a pulse on what's going on, you know, in, in their lives. And you care about that just as much as you do reaching the goal. That's incredible. Thank you both. I think another thing that we were interested in knowing is, do you guys have a certain favorite leader within your lives or your experience? Or maybe do you have an individual that comes to mind that acted as a leader within your life? I definitely do. I am very fortunate to have uh, parents. My father is no longer with us, but uh, both of my parents were leaders in their community and just with everything that they did. My father uh, was a very successful basketball coach 
And he was also a, a industrial arts teacher. They called, I don't know what they call that now. I think we used to call it shop. So um, <laughs> he, he, he led in the classroom, he led in the community. And so I observed him um, mold and, and give direction and, and successfully execute plays on the basketball court with a variety of individuals, young men with a variety of different skill sets and still be successful. I mean, I saw that person, that's not easy to do. Um, I also uh, have to lift up my mother. My mother um, is, is a retired uh, English professor, uh, dean, very educated woman who did a lot in her community. Um, she instilled in me um, high standards. And so both of these examples were 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 people that I <laughs> that I that I saw every day, but I, I saw them walk the walk. So to my colleague's point, it wasn't just a parental do this, do that. I actually saw them do it. I saw the impact that they had on on other people. And I saw how people looked up to them and revered them uh, and and really appreciated the time that they spent the humility, the intentionality, you know, they actually poured out of themselves. So those are our two leaders. And my third, I, I like to work in threes, um, is, is my pastor. My pastor is a retired um, army colonel and he, he leads from a place of it, not just intentionality, but leads from a place of wanting to get to know people. He is a people person. And I learned, I learned a lot about uh, understanding people because we're so quick to want to solve the problem, especially people like me, engineers, just show me the problem. Let's get to it. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's work this thing out. And what I learned from my past was that how can I work with you when I don't know anything about you, when I don't know what your interests are, you know, or, or even your name or, or what, what, what makes you tick, what bothers you, you know, just understanding a little bit about you so that I know who I'm working with and I can have an appreciation from your point of view, all of those things and, and all, all three of those individuals have left an indelible mark and imprint on my life as a leader. Yeah, so um, for for me, the, you know, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is is first and foremost. I think for for me, my my biggest role model uh, as as I as I mature and I and I grow spiritually. I just think I, I think Christ modeled that throughout his life. The idea of you know, he led and he led out of humility and empathy and 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 discipline. Um, and I'm thankful for that example in my life. Um, for me, the, my my greatest honor will always be the two decades I spent in the United States Army. Um, especially during, you know, um, the turbulent years that, you know, the world's gone through over the past, um, you know, 10 to 25 years. Um, so if I was to pick just one individual that I was able to serve with or under during that time period, I mean, that would just be uh, offensive, I feel like, um, because I just had so many great examples. Um, but, but I will say, I think the one thing, uh, the one thing they all demonstrated, um, I think the one thing um, that I learned from all of them was that you know the um, you know, the the things that that excite you? Those are not random. Um, you know, even even within the army, like you know, everybody thinks the army. Everybody does one thing. It, it's it's a huge organization. There's so many different um, niches and skill sets and, and jobs and, and, and missions. And um, you know, leaders always you know taught their their junior leaders and soldiers like, hey, listen, if something excites you, that's not random. That is that is a part of your passion. That's a part of your purpose. And they always encouraged us to pursue that. Um, and I try to lead, you know, within our organization the same way. I mean, when someone finds something that excites them, um, that's not random. You don't just say, hey, oh, that's great. <laughs> Go away. I mean, that's that's part of, you know, they're discovering who they are. They're discovering what their passion is. And, and that's part of their purpose. And that gets back to leading people whenever you can you can help people discover what excites them and what gets them passionate and you can help direct them into that role and onto that path. Again, you're, you're going to see that individual and the organization succeed in a way that, you know, you could never imagine. So I think that was one of the biggest examples um, was just watching leaders um, look at guys that they didn't want to let go of because uh, they did outstanding work, but understanding like, Hey, you have found something that excites you. And that's not random. That's part of your, your passion and discovering who you are. And then watching leaders release guys to go explore, you know, those interests and those passions and just watching where those careers went and where, uh, you know, where those careers took organizations. It was an absolute joy. 
That's incredible. So thank you both for your thoughtful responses. So essentially what we want to do with our remaining time is to dive into some questions that were actually submitted by our AEOP Alumni Council and loyal viewers. So our first question that we'd like to start with is for Ms. Felton. So could you answer, when did you first recognize yourself as a leader within your career or even within your education, certain turning points in your life? And what did you do to redefine your leadership skills? As we know that you've had such an amazing career over the years. So I will be honest and say that it wasn't until someone recognized me as a leader that I knew I was leading. I thought that I was doing what was right. I thought that I was, you know, meeting a need. Um, and in some cases, even checking the box. I'm, I, I do believe in, and when you're given an opportunity and someone, and you sign up to to do a thing, to, to work on a thing that you actually just do it. And so it wasn't until uh, someone said, you know, Karen, I like for you to do this, to my colleague's point, you have a passion in this. I think you would be good over here. And so that that's that tap on the shoulder was was my first um, opportunity to to say, hey, I could do this. And that happened in school. It happened when someone said, you know, you write well. Can can you can you can you write this for me, or can you enter this essay contest, or um, you know, I saw how you handled getting a D on that test. You know, I think that. You'd be great. You'd be a great tutor because there's a lot of folks that aren't doing well. I mean, who would think I got a D? You want me to tutor? But <laughs> it was how I handled it was how I handled the D that that led someone to ask me to do things. So for me, that's been my 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 experience my entire career is being in the I believe in the right places at the right time and have and having others say, okay, I I think we need your help here or recognizing something that they saw in me. Uh, in the latter question, how did I refine uh, my leadership skills? Um, I'm not going to just say it just, you just uh, happened overnight. Uh, I will say that it did take some intentionality on my part, working for the Department of Defense as an engineer and, and also working in the community, I have a desire to serve. And so I want to serve better. And so I also have gaps. I also have areas that are blind spots that other people saw and said, hey, you might want to look at that. So refining for me meant owning up to my stuff, owning up to areas that I, that, that I could probably use a little bit more work in, a little bit more discipline, a little bit more time and attention, and then being intentional about working on those areas. Um, I also uh, volunteered. I, I, I did try to be of service. So I put myself around people that didn't think like me. Uh, that that if I was a one and zero, I tried to find someone that, that didn't understand anything I was talking about. Because again, learning from people that are not like me, that don't look like me, that come from different backgrounds than me, again, allows me to, to be able to see things from their perspective. And it's a learning opportunity. So that is one thing that I definitely encourage you to do. Do not be afraid of being uncomfortable. It will definitely help you. Um, um, my next one is that failure also helped redefine my leadership <laughs> skills. There are some things Karen is not good at. And, uh, it, it takes, it, it takes um, some humility and it, in that it just takes the ability to understand that, hey, I'm not strong in this area. Um, it takes being vulnerable. I had to learn how to ask for help for those, for those areas that I wasn't getting or, or wasn't excelling at. And sometimes that help came from sitting down and listening to a different perspective. It came from taking a class that says, hey, you know, maybe you can learn more about this area. Uh, it came from self-study. Sometimes I didn't wait for other people to say, I think you could do better in this. Sometimes I went out and sought it, said, okay, I know that this is a blind spot for me. Uh, I'd like to read this book or I'd like to um, do some more research. And to that end, um, my, my last uh, point is, is actually reading books. I, I love reading. And I, I found two books along my journey. One recently, which I highly recommend, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. It's called Let the World See You by Sam Acho. He talks about being your authentic self and not being afraid and not being afraid to show up exactly who you are, not muting yourself, not, um, not hiding who you are, because the world needs exactly who you are. It needs exactly what my colleague said, that passion, that thing that makes you excited. And when you mute that, 
you know, we're, we're losing out on some cure or some, some, some technical capability, some innovation, something creative, because you're not showing up as you. And that book does a really great job of pointing that out. And then the last book is called Legacy, 15 Lessons in Leadership uh, by James Kerr. He actually followed the rugby team, the All Blacks, and he saw how they, they played. He saw the camaraderie. He saw and documented how they even cleaned up the locker room, how they took the time to actually not just show up on the field, but again, it's those little things, as little as sweeping up and putting the dirty clothes in the basket. Everybody took a turn, everybody owned and took responsibility for their stake on this team, all towards success. And those uh, little nuggets were really helped, they really helped uh, redefine the leader that I wanted to be. That's incredible. I think it's interesting to see how you even modeled some of the aspects of your career and the introductions that you received into making that an opportunity to learn more and to increase your skills and later on build as a leader. So we're so great, to, so glad to hear that. Uh, so for Mr. E, it's a question that we have for you. It's kind of a condensing what I just touched on, but if you could give one piece of advice to an upcoming leader, what would it be? Well, I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to say is I'm going to hit on what Ms. Felton just said, and that is please read. Please read. Read. I, I mean, it, it, again, it's one of those things that, like we don't do anymore. I, I'm, I'm amazed at how many people just don't read. I will tell you, um, as you progress in your career and, and, and you reach a level in an organization where, you know, like where Ms. Felton and I are, where you do observe and you do assess a lot of talent, it is so obvious who reads and, and, and who doesn't, I, I mean, and, and so just take that for what it's worth. I know for a lot of people, that's not, you know, their most favorite thing in the world. Uh, but if you really want to develop your leadership, I, I will say your continuing education. And, you know, once you leave school, there very few people ever throw you a test or, you know, demand like Miss Dalton's to demand that you learn something. Um, but it is so obvious and apparent to those around you, you know, when you are taking the time to educate yourself, um, you know, when you're reading. And again, those are things I look for when I'm assessing talent. When, when I'm assessing a, a student and I can tell they're an avid reader, I know that every time they read something, they're going to apply that to their leadership. And, and, and that's going to translate into my organization. Now, I'll even ask them in an, in an interview, what's the last book you read? You know, and if your last book was Of Mice and Men in the ninth grade, I, I, I'm just being honest, we're probably moving on. You know, and then I've got other, you know, I've got other folks that, you know, I mean, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll read leadership books or I had a student just recently, we, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a farm, we grow potatoes primarily, literally read a book on potatoes. And now I gotta tell you, I was like three years into the organization before I ever wrote a book on potatoes, but he wanted to come work at this farm. And so he educated himself. He actually read about, about what crop we farm so that he could speak intelligently during his interview. So please, please read. Um, the other thing, the other thing that I will, that I will, I would love to tell um, anybody watching that's getting ready to like go through an interview process. One, enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Please just relax and enjoy it. Like, I mean, this is what you've been working so hard for. It, it's like literally time to go out and, and find something you're passionate about and, and go to work. So in, enjoy it and, and learn from it and learn from it. Enjoy sitting down with folks like Miss Felton, you know, and, and some, I mean, there are so many great folks out there that are going to sit down, they're going to interview you um, and, and learn from them. And something I, I rarely see, but when I do see it, I actually had an individual, you know, we, we didn't offer them a position. And a week later, that individual reached back out to me and said, hey, can we talk about my interview? I was just wondering, you know, if we could if we could discuss it, if you had any, you know, pointers for me, or maybe, you know, my next interview, what I could, what I could maybe do better, or, or you know, what would make me a stronger candidate? I hired him. I hired him like, right, as, as you're, you're hired. I mean, again, like those are the types of things that you just don't see. Um, and I think the reason is it's not that people don't care, not everybody feels that way, but we just get so stressed out about the process that we don't even think about it. Like Miss Felton's asking me a question. I'm not even thinking about the question. I just wanna, I just wanna give the right answer and and hopefully get a job. Um, and listen, listen to the questions, give thoughtful answers, 
And, you know, just because maybe it, you know, it doesn't, that opportunity doesn't work out, re-engage that person. Say, hey, how do you think I interviewed? You know, or, or what do you think would have made me a stronger candidate? Again, those are the types of things that are going to improve you as a leader. Um, and then what's amazing is if you'll go through that process, um, you'll be able to pass that on. You know, you'll, you'll teach other young people to do the same thing. And, 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 and it's amazing. And you can, you can see that with candidates. You can see when you get a candidate that just really enjoys the process and is going into it as a learning experience and, and what I'm going to learn from it. Um, ask questions. I, I, I'm always amazed that when you look at a candidate and you say, do you have any questions for me or for us? And they just sit there and look at you, you know, straight face. If you get in a room with Miss Dalton, you better have some questions. I mean, like you said, that's an amazing career. Okay. So call, ask who's interviewing you, ask if you can have a bio, you know, and if you're going to sit down in a room with some amazing people, ask some amazing questions. You got to have questions. And maybe it doesn't even have anything to do with the particular job you're interviewing for, but if you sit down in front of a Miss Felton, like ask a question, even if it's just a question about leadership. Um, so that's the advice that I would give um, those watching this afternoon is, is you guys kind of start that process. Don't go into the process. I got to get a job. And this is stressful. Enjoy the process. Learn, meet some amazing people, start to network. And if it doesn't work out first time, always re-engage, figure out where you could be stronger and you will be amazed at how many doors open up for you. So leadership is stressful and challenging. My piece of advice to all of you is enjoy it along the way. Enjoy the journey because it is fun. It's incredible. I think something that especially you brought up through all the examples that you had was that leaders are also learners. So constantly going out of your way to try to learn and try to you know, advance your skills and even your interpersonal skills, they go a long way. Thank you both for that. So here's our final question, our million dollar question to both of you uh, as we're wrapping up for today. We'd both, we'd love to know both of your thoughts as to what would you say to someone who's not a natural born leader, but would like to become one? I would first of all say that you can lead from the back. So when I hear the term natural born leader, um, I think that's a phrase a lot of people use when they see attributes that they admire or they need. Um, I offer that not everybody's going to recognize the leadership qualities that you have because often we recognize what we what we see in ourselves. So what I what I what I the advice that I give you is number one recognize that you have value that you possess information, thoughts, ideas that are needed, regardless of whether people recognize that as leadership, you possess um, something in, in, innate to you that is worth getting to know, that is worth getting to, to learn more about, and that's worth sharing, period. Uh, we can put leadership on that label, but at the end of the day, um, you're, you, 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 you are here and available to help someone solve a problem, to help someone do something, and to and to just really share who you are in order to edify, amplify, and and and, and improve the room that you're in, um, make it better than it was before you entered it. And so, if no one has told you today or ever that they see leadership qualities in you, that's okay. Understand that who you are and where you are right now is a journey and you're going to develop. So to get to the, the point of the question, um, what you can do is start by understanding what you enjoy. Start by understanding what it is that you like to do. Understand a little bit more about yourself. So maybe I don't want to do this, but you know I kind of like this. This is my jam. Understand you know what makes you uh, excited, understand what makes you withdraw. So just, just start nicking down those things about yourself that you can document and then move in spaces that support what you found and that, that, that really, uh, and in spaces that need what you, what you document, right? That could be, um, you're a good listener. So go to spaces where people need someone to understand the details when there's all whole bunch of chatter in the room, but they need that one person that's going to come out there. Okay, this is what they said. This is what they need. They need you. That's leadership. 
Um, and so just, just really start to hone in on that. And as it relates, you know, I do sit here representing the Department of Defense. Um, I do enjoy my career, uh, but, I, but I do want you to know that specifically with the SMART program and other programs, if it's not STEM, if STEM is not the, the area that you see value at it, it could be art, it could be whatever it is, start to hone in on the things that you enjoy and, and the areas where, where you can provide perspective in your unique way and in the way that, that you are created to be. And, and don't ever let anyone mute you from, from sharing and giving that because we need it. Whether people recognize it or not, we need it. Yeah, I think there's there's a million dollars worth of books that have been written to answer your million dollar question, and and that is uh, that. And when you get to Miss Feldman and I's level, like that, that is the debate. Like, are you know, are leaders born or are leaders made? I mean, I mean, there's there's college courses from now to eternity that will seek to answer that question. They never will. Um, I think Miss Felton, you know, answered it perfectly, and that is again, it all gets back to your passion. Um, Typically, once somebody discovers something they're passionate about, whatever whatever is a unique characteristic about them, um, you know that that makes them a, a leader in that position, it, it comes it comes flying out. Um, you know, no one is a natural born leader when they're stuck in in, in, a, in, a, in a job or or they're in a position that they just they're absolutely they just it's not their passion and they're not enjoying it. Um, you know, I mean, even for I mean, some people are charismatic. You know, other people, you know, are, are, are more laid back. I mean, it just everybody's personalities are different. Your strengths and weaknesses are different. So it really is all about um, finding your passion. And I mean, to Miss Felton's point, now bore us with a military, you know, history example. I mean, I have to do it at least once. Um, but, you know, you, you, you had George Washington, who was this very tall, strong, very in charge, you know, presence. And everybody looked at him and was like, oh my goodness. Like, I mean, that's, that's our guy. He's going to lead the kind of an army. And then you had Napoleon who is this little short round guy, um, you know, not as impressive physically, you know, as say George Washington, but yet his, you know, his accomplishments on the battlefield still very impressive. We're still learning about him at the United States Military Academy today. So, I mean, there, there's a perfect example. I mean, it, I would say you can look at both of those and, and, we might say one was a natural born leader or one wasn't. Um, they couldn't have been more opposite, yet their achievements were absolutely, you know, on par with each other. And it's because they found their passion. Um, so finding the passion is the key to unlocking your leadership. Um, trying to answer the question whether you're a natural born leader or not. Don't go down that road. Don't waste your time. Just find something you're passionate about and find the need that needs to be met and just start meeting that need. And as others come by and come along and say, hey, that's impressive, look at them and say, yeah, why don't you help me? I'm getting a little tired. I mean, that's normally how leadership, that's normally how leadership starts is someone sees you pulling the cart up the hill and says, wow, that looks like, you know, it's a lot of energy and you look tired and you say, yes, I am. And I would love if you help me. And then you'd be amazed by the end of it, you know, you've got 20 people helping you. The cart gets to the top of the hill. And again, like that's how success is reached. But it all started with, you just finding your passion and just seeing a need that needed to be met and just jumping in there. You know, Miss Felton said, get in the trenches, do it, get in the trenches, start. Don't expect to just look at people and say, Hey, we need to push this cart up the hill. Everyone will look at you and say, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Um, but once, once people see you doing it, they, they I'm telling you the, the, the human spirit, they cannot stand by and watch you do it alone. People are, are amazing. We're amazing. And, and relationships are amazing and people will jump in and you'll be amazed that you'll discover like, wow, I, you know, I have some real leadership qualities. Wonderful. I feel like I've learned so much just discussing this with both of you today. And I'd like to thank our AEOP Alumni Council for sending in those great questions. Well, that's about all the time that we have for today's broadcast. We'd like to say a huge thank you to both of our incredible guest speakers, Ms. Felton and Mr. Eads, for joining us today. We've learned so much about the importance of leadership, hard work, and overall dedication and passion that one has in order to become a leader. And I can't wait to see how the AEOP community uses their leadership skills uh, and uses that towards their future accomplishments. accomplishments. Uh, I think that it's really without a doubt, both of your stories are gonna serve as some sort of inspiration for STEM talent and leaders within the nation. And we can't wait to see and hear more from what you guys are able to accomplish as well. 
So we'd also like to thank our audience and the AEOT team for making this possible. With that being said, I'm Samina Mondal, and this is Person to Person. Until next time, good night, everyone. Miss an exciting episode of Person to Person? Can't make our live broadcasts? Why not subscribe to the AEOP Membership YouTube channel and never miss an episode again? For more information on the Army Educational Outreach Program opportunities in your area, simply visit www.usaeop.com. Thank you for tuning in to AEOP's Person to Person. Join us again in two weeks.